I want to show you a couple of more advanced debugging techniques in Lattice Radiant. So whenever you run into some kind of problem and you're trying to debug, um, the first thing you should be looking for is where can I get more information? So very rarely does just rereading all of your code or deleting and rewriting all of your code actually solve the problem. Um, and the TAs and I are not just wizards that can look at VHDL code and instantly find bugs. Usually we are looking for more information, other things that give us clues about where to go look for a problem. Um, and once you have tens or hundreds of lines of VHDL code, right, you're not gonna be able to just comb through it and find anything other than a, like a syntax error that the compiler's pointing you to a specific line. You're gonna need some clues about exactly where to look. And that's what I wanna show you here. Okay, so I've got some VHDL code that I've just written um, and it's pretty simple. There's just a, an enable input and a counter output that's four bits into my top module. So these are gonna come, one pin coming into the FPGA, four bits, four pins coming out of the FPGA. And then this simple behavior. So on, we've got the HS OSC, so 48 megahertz oscillator here. And on the rising edge of the clock, uh, if the enable pin is high, then the counter is gonna follow us very simple sequence. So it's going to, if it's all zeros, then it'll go to 0001. If it's 0001, it'll go to 0011. And from there to 0010, and then finally back to 0000. So this is, the bottom two bits are just following a two-bit gray code. The top two bits are just always zero. And then finally, I've just got this assignment that if the enable pin is low, then counter just keeps the value of counter. Okay, and that's it. That's the end of the process and the end of the architecture here. Okay, so I've, I've built this thing and it is not working at all. Like nothing coming out, can't figure out what's going on. Okay, so somehow I need to find some more information. So first place to go look is the Netlist Analyzer. So after having run Synthesis, you can go look at the Synthesis Netlist or sometimes known as the RTL Netlist. So if you click right here in the, uh, this RTL view, we'll let you see the, the netlist as produced by synthesis. And this looks kind of basically right. So we've got, um, we've got four, a four bit register here. So four flip flops, we've got the oscillator, the enable is connected, the counter is connected. There's gonna be, there's four muxes here that are gonna select um, which of the, of the four input values with these three muxes, and then this mux is, mux is gonna take the enable. So if it is enabled, then we're gonna pick one of these new values. If it's not enabled, we're just gonna keep the previous version of the counter. Right, so no red flags here, right? Oftentimes, if you do something wrong, you know, maybe some chunk of your design is missing or something is disconnected, or you look inside some module and it's empty, all of those things can be warnings um, about what's what's going on or what is wrong with your code. But in this case, you know, this looks okay. So let's keep poking. Um, another place to go look uh, that's sometimes helpful is in the report. So if you click on the, the project summary, it just shows you some basic information about your project. And then you can drill down into each of these different reports to find out more information. So this is usually just the output of the commands, um, but it also includes lots of inform information about your design. So um, synthesis we've already kind of checked out, so let's go ahead and look at the map reports. Um, and here it's going to show us information about the actual utilization of all of the components um, on the FPGA. So synthesis, again, is taking the VHDL code and then turning that into a high level circuit design with, for example, comparators and adders and registers and so forth. The map phase is taking these design, this design that includes things like comparators and registers and whatever, and turning that into a design that you can actually implement on the FPGA. So saying, well, okay, you asked for an adder. I know how to build an adder with the lookup tables and so forth. You asked for a register. I can build that using four flip-flops in the FPGA. And then, so once you've done that, you can actually see what fraction of the FPGA's resources are gonna be used. Uh, the resource 
usage that tries to break that down, or this, this first thing will also give you this nice printout of that. I mean, here we see something that's pretty weird. So it says that number of slice registers is zero. So that means it's not using any flip-flops in the design. So, and it says it's only using two LUT4s. So our design here, which you know looks reasonably complex, um, has definitely has four flip-flops, definitely requires more than two lookup tables, I mean, depending on how well you compress this. Um, you know, maybe not one for every item here, but probably more than two. Um, and so somehow a whole lot of stuff is like getting optimized away or otherwise disappearing from our design. So that's that's a warning sign, right? It's not something on the circuit issue side. It's not something you know, external. It's like something with the design is clearly wrong. So let's go back to the Netlist Analyzer and maybe look a little closer. So if you click, there's two different Netlist views. So there's this RTL view that we've been looking at, and then there's the technology view. So RTL view is the output of synthesis. The technology view is the output of having run the map phase. And if I click on this, well, this is interesting. So we've got our enable pin, and it is connected to a buffer, which you'd ex expect for the input pin. And then that is not connected to anything. And then we've got this here. So this is V low, this is V high. So this looks like just a, a, a zero, a source of zero and a source of one. And those are connected to buffers that goes to the output. So this is just set up to be the value looks like, uh, so zero is a one, so it's a one and then a zero and then a one and a one. And that's just driven out to counter and there's no flip-flops and nothing else. Okay, so that is definitely wrong. Um, and now we've got some kind of idea where to go look, right? So somehow in our design, somehow it's taking our design and turning it into this. It thinks that this is a reasonable implementation of our RTL circuit. So maybe let's go back and give this a closer look. So let's see. So we can just maybe go ahead and trace this all the way through. So we've got our output. You can click on any of the wires and it'll highlight them for you, which is pretty nice for tracing them because obviously its layout is not always the most clean. So that output is going in here. I mean, this is less than eight, but we're, we don't actually want a less than. We wanted. We're trying to compare if something is equal and select based on that way. Let's go back and look at our code. So if counter equals zero, if counter is, oh, if counter is less than zero, 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 one, well, that's, that doesn't make any sense because we've already compared to zero. And so this should be equal and that should be equal. Um, this is a super common mistake to make because we use this this you know arrow equals thing for assignment but it also means less than or equals when you use it in a comparison right, so you have to be super careful about that okay let's go ahead and resynthesize and rerun map as well and then see what we actually get in terms of output so since this runs pretty quickly maps going and of course the netlist has been updated so let's go ahead and look at that so again, this is back to the RTL netlist. Uh, this looks good. Now we've got equals eight, uh, equal eight, equal seven, equal six. So these are not saying that they're equal to the number six. It's just that it's got to give a unique name to each of these things, right? We've got mux nine, mux 10, mux 11, counter three, and so forth. So it's, it's giving a, a number to identify each of these. Okay, but now we've got equals instead of less than comparisons. So that looks good. Let's go look back at the technology view. Ah, now we've got something that looks more reasonable. So we've got, um, here is the HSOSC itself. Um, here, there are a couple of LUTs, lookup tables. 
Here are a couple of flip-flops. And so that's looking much better. Um, and note still that this is the low. So this is just a zero and that is driven to bits two and three. Uh, so the, the top two bits of my four bit thing still are zero. So I didn't actually need four flip-flops. I just needed two because there's only a two bit gray code coming out. That, that makes lots of sense. Um, and then finally, let's go back to the reports just to see what this shows. So again, still just two slice registers, um, but sorry, now we are using two slice registers instead of zero. So we, we needed two registers, we're using five LUTs instead of two. That's starting to look a lot better. And now I can, with much more confidence, I can go back and flash this to my FPGA and give it a try and see if it actually works. So again, I wanna encourage you, anytime you're debugging something and you just get stuck, um, don't just go back and reread your code and just like hope that you're gonna find it. Right? Like find some way, whatever it is, um, whether it's poking around in the net list or looking at some of the reports, you know, looking for any warnings or errors coming out um, or sticking the digital discovery or an oscilloscope on some output ports, do something to get more information because very rarely are you just gonna have the sudden flash of insight and recognize what the bug is. Usually that insight's gonna come because you saw something else that looked odd and that made you think of something else and then you can go back to your code and discover what's going on. So hopefully that's helpful um, and I wish you all the best as you try to debug your increasingly complex designs.